Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with two very special guests who are in studio with us today. So I'm here with Rylan and Christian. Woo! Hi. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to have you guys introduce yourself. So we'll start ladies first. So <laughs> who are you and like what do you do? How old are you? So my name is Rylan and I'm 15. I go to Sabino High School and I love America. I love the Lord and yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, amen. Right. Hey guys, I'm Christian. I'm 15 and I go to Sabino High School and we started a Sabino chapter there to really just spread the word of God and to just educate people on their rights and just the right to people, honestly. Amen, amen. So the story of you getting involved with it, um, well, the story that I know, you're going to start share another one <laughs> yeah. of just kind of signing up and not even really knowing. Can you, Rylan, share how, because you're the president of the Sabino chapter, and then yes. are you VP, Christian? Yeah. Yep. yeah. So yeah. I'm the president of Turning My Faith and Morgan's the VP. He's not here Yay. with us right now. But <laughs> So can you share how you got involved with Turning Point USA? Yeah, so I actually had been following Turning Point for a little while on just Instagram and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I like went to their website because I heard Charlie Kirk on one of his podcasts say, go sign up on Turning Point. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it would be a newsletter or text mm -hmm. or something like <laughs> super chill. And then I get a text from this girl, Mackenzie, and she's like, hey, Rylan, I hear you want to start a Turning Point <laughs> chapter at your school. And I'm like, what? what does that mean like uh I don't think I wanted to do that yeah. and so then we got to talking and stuff and she called me and told me about what turning point does and all that kind of stuff and I just was like okay I actually think I want to do this yeah. I'm so passionate about America and just standing up for impor important issues that align with the Bible and so yeah I just got in touch with her and it took a year but then I got him on board mm -hmm. and we started the chapter together at our school so yeah, that's awesome yeah all right well Christian were you kind of forced into it or have you always wanted to be a part <laughs> of politics and this stuff did you know about Turning Point no before? I had no clue about Turning Point I I always loved politics mm -hmm. but I really wasn't like the type to like go out and talk about politics mm -hmm. but right when I heard about it I was like well, that's crazy. Yeah. But um, right when she actually signed up is right when Charlie Kirk had his event here. Mm. So mm -hmm. she was like, yeah, actually, Charlie Kirk is having an event. We can go and like see what this is all about. Yeah. So then we came here and both of us really loved what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So then we were like, you know what? OK, let's do it. Yeah. So yeah. then we went into it just face first and we had no idea what to do or mm -hmm. what was going to happen. But we just did it. And yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Well, I didn't yeah. know that was your guys' like very first tabling and all that. You guys yep. were amazing, and yeah. it was so cool to have you. That was on Valentine's Day of yeah, this year. That was a crazy thing. It's the first time I met you guys. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was so crazy because I was so shocked to hear that you guys were were you fourteen at the time? Yeah, we were yeah. fourteen. Fourteen year old, <laughs> and, like getting into all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't even have to worry about this stuff. But Crazy. it's so cool that you guys are so mature, like way above your years. I mean, I think it kind of helps that Christian's like seven foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> like, Definitely. A little, little bit, a little bit. A little bit shorter. But um, so tell me the story of like what it looked like then. You brought it into the school. Like how did that? Yeah. Were they welcoming or? Like. Well, first off, um, last school year, we were, it was like towards the end of the school year and we had just gotten done being online because of COVID mm -hmm. and schools were shut down. Yeah. And so we had just gotten back in person and me and him were like really trying to get more officers and we were trying to get all these papers signed. Um, and they basically like we went through the whole process and they were like, you're just going to have to wait till next year. Mm -hmm. This is too difficult. Um, all this stuff and honestly I'm kind of glad because I don't think we were really ready for it Not at all. yeah and so I think it was kind of a good like okay you need to be ready for next year and so this year started and we got it done right away mm -hmm. we got our teacher advisor and everything all of our officers and we are so blessed with like the best officers we're mm -hmm. all believers mm -hmm. and love America and it's just really cool but yeah definitely 
um, we started the school year off with a bang because <laughs> they were the day before school started, they were trying to mandate masks again mm -hmm. when they were saying, oh, no, it's going to be optional this year. You're not going to have to worry about it. And all of a sudden at 4 p.m. the day before the first day of school, they said, nope, masks are mandated. Mm -hmm. And me and him were like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. Um, and so we were like, let's start a protest. Mm -hmm. And so we only had about 10 people <laughs> yeah. and a lot of them were parents, but we stood out the first day of high school, the first real day of high school yeah. we've ever had. And we protested in front of all the cars driving by. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that was like the start of it. Yeah. What do you yeah. think of a Christian? I thought, I thought the protest was really fun. Mm -hmm. And then, but right after the protest, so the principal saw us mm -hmm. protesting outside, yeah. and they obviously didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So I came into school to get my schedule, and so did she and a few of her other friends that were protesting with mm -hmm. us. And then uh, they were like, well, in order to get your schedule and your ID, you need to have a mask on. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm not going to put my mask on. But So then I said that I had a medical condition, which I do, mm -hmm. and I have a doctor's note for it too. Yeah. Um, and so they sent me to the front office, and they kicked me out of my classes, wow. saying that I can't go if I don't have a mask on and that I can do online school if mm -hmm. I would like. And they were discriminating because I was right next to him in that line, and they yeah. only pulled him, not me. And oh, neither of us were wearing masks. Yeah. There's so. something against tall people. Yeah, <laughs> I real. guess so. I guess so. Too but intimidating. <laughs> yeah, so then they pulled me out. They said that I couldn't go to any classes. Mm -hmm. And then the principal said that she would talk to me, but only if we were standing outside six feet oh. apart. So I went to walk outside, and I opened the door for her. And then she turned around and walked away and said that she's not going to talk to me. Oh, so God. then I went and I got my mom and then I had my mom come in. And then my mom talked to the principal mm -hmm. and the doctor and everybody um, saying that I have a doctor's note. Yeah. And then they ended up telling me that I can only take off my mask to have a few calming breaths and then put my mask back on. And I told them that wasn't going to work. Sick. But... After that, the, I went to school every day without a mask, and they mm -hmm. gave me problems for it. But mm -hmm. I told them about my rights to be in a class yeah. and that they're going to get in trouble mm -hmm. if they don't let me in class because of a mask. And then yeah. every day since, they've not liked me, but they've let me in <laughs> class. Wow. So that's, that's crazy. Yeah. We've both, I mean, we at the beginning of the year, teachers would ask you all the time, please put a mask on. They mm -hmm. don't really do that anymore. I think they kind of mm -hmm. just don't care. Yeah. And the way that I went about it is I'd just be like, no, thank you, until they stopped asking me. Mm -hmm. And that was all I'd say. And then eventually they'd be like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, neither of us did anything wrong. We were both mm -hmm. so respectful. I mean, mm -hmm. he was in the office the first day of school. Mm -hmm. Like, all for how many classes do you think you were in there for? I think I missed my first three classes wow. before my mom came. And we crazy. were respectful the whole time. Mm -hmm. And just being kind. Um, I mean, I think we both have had many times where we needed to be straightforward with people and be like being respectful and everything, but just being like, like, no, thank you. I'm not wearing a mask. Yeah. And this is my right. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm so proud of you guys for doing that because a lot of people, right, they're just like, it'd just be easier to just like do mm -hmm. it. And, but you realize that that's what they want they want exactly. to make it where it will do this and then we'll do the vaccine like it just keeps mm -hmm. going exactly. like where does it stop up. exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and i love how i was watching one of your stories on instagram and you're like just letting you guys know that we're doing a peaceful protest you're not being wild and crazy about it yeah, and no. like a lot of people assume and think that mm -hmm. that's what conservatives do mm -hmm. but it wasn't like that for you guys but yeah what else has happened since then? Any other things that you guys have experienced that have been kind of yeah. wild and crazy that you want to tell her the cop story? Yes, I would yeah. love to hear that story. So, um, basically, the mask uh, protest mm -hmm. made a lot of the people not like us. Yeah. And then they found out that the people doing the protest were from the new club on campus called Turning Point USA. Mm. But in order for the club to be an official club, it needed to get um, accepted through student council, mm. which is which bizarre is because yeah. normally it's only colleges mm -hmm. that that stuff kind of has to happen mm. for. Um, so we went in. Well, they voted and they voted us out. So mm. we couldn't be a club. Mm -hmm. So then her and I said, asked the teacher if we were allowed to go in there and say what we were really about because Plead our case, basically. Because yeah. after we got denied, one of the student council members 
decided that they were going to make a big old fuss over social media. Mm -hmm. So one of our Instagram posts just blew up and got like 500 comments of just hate comments and people telling us. Everyone from our school was like, like just going Mm -hmm. off on us. Yeah. So they were like, this is terrible what you guys are doing, blah, blah, blah. So that is why we got voted like out, right? Mm -hmm. So we asked uh, the teacher if we could go in there. And we could just explain to them, like, this is what we're really about. We're not about what these people are saying. We've never even had a meeting, so Mm. they don't know what we are about. Um, So we go in there and we tell everybody what it's really about and Mm -hmm. what's really happening. And then they end up approving us, Mm. right? Um, But the student council member who started all of that got kicked off of student Mm -hmm. council because of that. Because of the social media things that were stated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then... One day I was coming in. So we've already had a few meetings at this point, right? Mm -hmm. And they've been calling the board, trying to to get us kicked off. And they've been, like, emailing the governor, apparently. Some (laughs) Making phone calls. Oh, they started a petition against us, which, how many signatures did they get? It's close to, like, a thousand. (laughs) Yeah. To get us removed. I know. Like, thanks for those. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. So they started the petition to get us removed, and I went up and I talked to him about it, and I was like, can this actually get us removed and stuff? The petition can't get us removed at all, and there's no point in even doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, They're just doing it because it's fun to them. But So one day I was coming in, and I was late to school by like three minutes, right? And Mm -hmm. coincidentally, the person who hates us was right in front of me, Hmm. right? And I was trying to sign the papers to get in, and so was that individual. And I drank my water, and I choked on it. And I was like, (coughs) right? Uh Because I choked on my water. And later that day, I get called into the office, and there's a cop waiting for me. Because she said that I was purposely coughing on her, trying to give her COVID. I assaulted her. I sexually harassed her. And I was stalking her around the school. And then the cop pulled me in. And then they started, like, questioning me and this. And by the end, they realized everything wasn't true at all. And I got got out of it because they looked back at some footage and stuff and realized that absolutely none of this mm-hmm. it was all bogus they've never and they were said just, any words to each other either wow. yeah which is like yeah i've never crazy. talked to the person oh they goodness. just don't like me because of the club so wow. the cops realized it was bogus and they just let me go and wow yeah That's, i mean the same thing like i was hearing things about happening in Marana because mm-hmm. david catalano who goes here he um, is the counselors, and they were saying that so many young men are now being blamed and said yep. things that they have not done exactly. and things like that. And especially it's the LGBTQ community. They're like, really? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm sure they don't like your club either. Nope. But um, nope. they were. They've tried to get us taken out so many mm-hmm. times. They said that we hate gays yeah. and everything. Which is and absolutely, is obviously it? not Amen. true because we're believers and yep. we yeah. love everybody. Exactly. Amen. And what the Bible says, though, is what we're going to stand by because exactly. that's God's exactly. word. Yeah. But You're not making anything up. Like, yeah. we just don't want. And it's like, that's why I think that they don't understand that we're not just saying, oh, these things are the way it is because we want it this way. It's like, this Mm -hmm. is because the creator of the universe is saying this. Mm -hmm. So we are just being messengers to say this is what the Bible says because we'll all be judged one day for what we do, good or bad. And so he was um, saying that these young men were being accused of these things, Mm -hmm. but it was also like a good lesson learned for these young men too, though. It's like, praise God that you really were a man that was like, above reproach and that you didn't have to worry about that stuff because the Lord defended you. But it's a good example for young men to be like, don't put yourself then in situations where it could look like you're doing that. Like, and we always say, tell people like, be careful. Like when you're with someone else, like try not to be alone with the opposite sex because people could blame you for things that you didn't do. And I think it's just teaching everyone that we need to be living as if there was a camera on us because Mm -hmm. God's watching, but Mm -hmm. Not that we should be living in fear, but we should be men and women of integrity who are like, yeah. like with you, it, nothing stuck. Like stuck? That's a great <laughs> word. <laughs> stuck. <laughs> We're going to make that up. We're going to put that in the dictionary. Um, yeah. And so I am really thankful for you guys just being men and women of integrity who it's like even talking because 
I mean, your grandma, Andrea, is like, yeah, is the best. Love her. But <laughs> she goes to this church. You guys know her. But just seeing and her telling me just at a young age, you are always someone who is just on fire for God and you love to lead worship and you have a beautiful voice and amazing at guitar and all these things that God has gifted you with. But you're not just lazy about it. Like, oh, I have these giftings. You use those giftings. And I mean, I don't know what you have. But I mean, it seems like you're a man who's willing to stand up for truth. And that's awesome mm-hmm. at a young age. And we need more men like that, especially who are going to lead. But um, what are some things that maybe giftings that you guys have that you've been able to use with Turning Point, but also just at church or whatever you do that you've used? Do you want to start? Yeah, we'll see Christian get to know you more. Um, Well, I've always been interested in, like, technology and Mm -hmm. stuff. So I run tech um, at um, Calvary East Mm -hmm. with Will. Mm. He's my buddy and Nick. So all three of us just run tech there. Um, And that's helped with Turning Point, obviously, because you can do more of the online Mm -hmm. aspect and just make make more stuff up and also i love just talking to people Mm -hmm. about the word of god and i love just not 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 bashing obviously but Mm -hmm. telling people like this is what that says like like Mm -hmm. when they were like you guys are hating on gays Mm -hmm. we're not hating on gays i love every single one of you guys but i can't agree with what you're doing because what you're doing isn't right Mm -hmm. but i do love you and i go home and pray for you every night it's i love you more than you probably think i love you Mm -hmm. obviously Mm -hmm. and it's just like people i don't know people just take it way out of context but i think that that's another thing that we're both really good at is just making sure that like people know that Mm. I'm not hating on you because you're gay or anything. I'm not hating on anybody for any Mm -hmm. reason. I'm loving you, but I can't agree with what you're doing. It does that mean that we're going to treat you different. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Like we had one girl come into turning point and she did not agree with anything Mm. that we say or do at all. Mm. And we had her in there and it was one of our debate days and she walked out saying that she absolutely loves it and Mm. she'll probably be, come again because wow. all of her friends were telling her it's this terrible place they just hate on you and whatnot and she realized that it's not actually that and that it's yeah. just so that everybody can have a safe place to learn about god and learn about mm-hmm. your rights and that's yeah. all that it is i yeah, think awesome. both me and christian and our two other officers eden and dana we both are really blessed with the fact that we can just stay true to who we are mm-hmm. wherever we are And that makes us really strong individuals because Mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, like going to school, especially when everything was really just like tense at school with Mm -hmm. everything going on. I mean, for me, I'd get a little bit nervous going to school sometimes and I'd be like insecure and, you know, and I wouldn't let people see that. But I definitely had those times and I'd feel lonely even though I had wonderful people by my side like fighting this fight all together mm-hmm. um but we're just really blessed with being able to stay true to who we are and I think people can see that and we decide to speak out about truth mm-hmm. and things that are important yeah. and um I think people have genuinely noticed that about us mm-hmm. because all around school everyone who's commented and stuff people just recognize that we are consistent in what we say and what we do and that nothing's going to make us waver in our position Mm -hmm. and so yeah that's good yeah Yeah. that's more of like what i was trying to say Mm -hmm. i kind of went off topic but i think like before all of this Mm -hmm. i wasn't really the type to go out Mm -hmm. and express myself and i think god's really blessed all of us with the ability and with opportunities to go out and express Mm -hmm. god and express what is right and I I think that's one of the best parts the, and things that's happened with this club because I think it's really good just opportunities for us to go out and show like how Christianity like if you're a Christian not only you're a Christian but you have a lifestyle that yeah. you should live up to and you should want to mm-hmm. live up to and mm-hmm. you should want to do better every day and I think that's been one of the biggest opportunities to that to do that um, yeah. because like we're actually able to go out and love these people and do all this and not just let them think that we hate them yeah. and we're able to like talk to them and everything like that mm-hmm. and yeah. I think that's one of the best parts yeah. yeah that's awesome and I love that you guys can be bold I mean it's crazy because it still doesn't like 
I don't, it doesn't register how young you guys are, <laughs> but how bold you are in Christ because you realize that right in your natural like ways and stuff, you probably wouldn't be the most bold people, which mm -hmm. is good. You're not obnoxious. There's some people who are obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. But True. it's cool because Proverbs 28 1 says, The righteous are as bold as a lion. So, mm -hmm. as you guys are in right standing with Christ, then you're able mm -hmm. to be bold with others because it's not yeah, anything amen. you're making up or saying, like, This is how I feel. Exactly. No, this is what the Word of God says. And the Word of God will stand forever and last yeah. forever. And it's the truth. Yeah. And everything else that people are saying, they're lies, but they don't know it. They're deceived. And so exactly. for us, like you said, Christian, we're going to love them. We're going to yeah. show them, right? How will they know you're my disciples? It says by your love. Mm -hmm. And so love, a lot of times the world, though, they just look at it as one thing. Right Nowadays, it's really lust. And yes. it's not true love. It's very conditional. You do this for me. I'll do this for you. Mm -hmm. But true love is right. No greater love than a man lays down his life for a friend. Mm -hmm. And that was jesus he died for us so that we could have eternal life and it's just so cool that it might seem like it's not loving to share pe share with people what the bible says the good news but that's the love the most loving thing you could do because yeah. it's not being nice like i heard this sermon one time in california they're saying you can be a nice person and nice is you're so afraid to offend them you'll just let them do whatever they want but if you're kind, mm -hmm. you're willing to say the hard things because you care about them exactly. and yep. you want them to be in heaven one day, right? You don't want them to be in hell apart from Christ. And it's just cool too, because the verse we were talking about in our last podcast with the young adults was um, 1 Timothy 4.12, to not let anyone look down at you because you're young, but be an example in speech and life and faith, or in speech and life and love, I think, and faith and impurity. Mm -hmm. So all those things, how you guys are living your life. I mean, I thought I was young, but you guys even more so are a great example because when people can see, hey, these are the years you guys should be living it up and partying and experiencing the world. Not saying, right? Because I see your guys' videos and how much fun you have, and I love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. You guys, so as fun. Christians, have fun, <laughs> yeah, but exactly. you don't have to do the things of the world. You're in this world, exactly. but you don't have to be a part of it. So mm -hmm. do you guys want to share what that looks like for you guys being young, still wanting to have fun, but doing it in a way of like purity and holiness and stuff that's glorifying to God? What does that look like for you on campus, off campus, just everyday yeah. life, I guess? You want me to start it off? Sure. All right, so I think on campus, it really starts with, you know, like the average high school student, they want to go have fun and get mm -hmm. drunk and yep. go do these things that they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it starts off by showing them that you can't just tell them, oh, you can mm -hmm. have fun doing this and yeah, right. you can have fun doing that because people don't think that you can have fun yep. doing this. Mm -hmm. People who are already doing all of the sins and stuff, mm -hmm. they don't believe that without that you can have fun mm -hmm. so i think yeah. that the first step on campus at least is to really just either bring them with you like invite them mm -hmm. places and consistently do it i know it might mm -hmm. seem like you're being obnoxious or whatnot but mm -hmm. when that person comes and they realize oh i can actually have fun without doing this stuff mm -hmm. and without having this sin in my life yeah. then that's that's amazing because mm -hmm. you're bringing that person one step closer to the Lord and that's the best Amen. thing that you can do. Exactly. And then with more of like the how we do it, mm -hmm. um, it's more of just so we we ha kind of have like this group and it's mm -hmm. me, my sister, Rylan, mm -hmm. and our friend Will. And we all just go out and whoever wants to come mm -hmm. can come if they want to and we just hang out, maybe watch a movie and then we just – like go jump in the pool and we go do this <laughs> stuff like you're a little kid and yeah. people people don't realize it but if you go back and you do stuff like you were a little kid and you had fun then you're probably gonna have fun oh, now yeah. mm -hmm. so i don't mm -hmm. know i think it's really cool to just mm -hmm. you know live life like you were young and you yeah. still are young yep. so you can live like you were young Amen. Sure. <laughs> That's good. Yep, yeah, sure. yeah, exactly what about you Riley? um i think like what he was saying about our friend group and stuff um a big thing is having genuine friends. Mm -hmm. And I think at being at a big high school, 
there's all these really big groups of people and you can feel pressured to be like, oh, well, I want a big group of people at school. Mm. But what you don't know is that I'm sure a lot of them are totally close and they're good friends and they're good people. But, you know, like there's going to be a lot of issues in that friend group Mm -hmm. and there's still going to be fake people because of how big it is and drama and everything. But like with us, we are like a little family of friends, you know, Mm -hmm. and we just have so much fun together and um, we just know that we are always there for each other. But anyways, I'm a little sidetracked. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the fun memories. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, this is so fun. Um, but at school, definitely an example that I thought of um, was how to be kind of a light and stuff mm-hmm. and be different at school is it might seem small to people, but I think cussing is kind of a big mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. And it really does set you apart, which I've learned because people are like, oh, it's just words. And mm you don't cuss like it's just normal and um people have told me multiple times I've never heard you cuss Rylan (laughs) and I'm like and they make it seem like I'm just this goody two shoes Mm. or something you know but I just I want to speak words that glorify the Lord and it totally does set you apart and we're both that way and Mm. we just like won't cuss at Mm -hmm. all and so um I think that's a really big thing and then just being super kind to people because there can be moments where especially having our club someone will make a remark to you or they'll flip you off as you're walking Mm -hmm. past them which has happened to him um and just like all this stuff but just being just being like okay and just Mm. getting over it and just being kind about it and smiling at them oh man people hate that (laughs) but it's the way to do it because Mm -hmm. that's sharing Jesus through Mm -hmm. that, through that smile, through not giving them what they want. That's sharing the light of the Lord. And so, um, I think those are like big things that Mm -hmm. I think of. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible talks about that, right? Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anyone was persecuted and made fun of, it was Jesus. And he turned Mm -hmm. the other cheek, right? He said, if a soldier tells you to carry it, his armor, you'll carry it another mile, right? And so God's ways are not how the world tells you. Like, if someone treats you like this, well, then you flip them off again. Like, me in high school, it scares me how I thought I was funny and cool. I'm like, Ooh. like it's just cool seeing you guys standing up for, like, hey, we're not going to cuss. I mean, I never cuss, but I would say words that were pretty close, and everyone's like, Ooh, like you're getting kind of edgy and I would like try to push it like go as yeah. close as I could mm-hmm. instead of being like no I'm going to be a light and I look at you guys I'm like man what I know now I just I wish that I could have like the wisdom which right you guys it's because of the word of God and you guys yeah. are going to church right you're mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. discipled and things like that to where it really helps you because I mean also that's why we need community Right. If you're having a hard day or for you Mm -hmm. getting flipped off or someone telling you like we hate you, Mm -hmm. you can think that you're fine. Yeah. You're racist. You're Mm -hmm. homophobe. You can think you're fine Mm -hmm. until you start hearing these. You go home and you're like, wait, like that that does hurt. Or because to think you're strong, like nothing hurts you. Or I'm like, oh, I'm so confident. Like I have no insecurities. Like you guys are in the year of insecure. Like. This is like the most insecure that you guys Mm -hmm. will be in these years. So just being able to have that friend group where you're like, hey, even though we're going to be made fun of, these things are going to happen. That's why we have each other to lift each other up, to spur each Mm -hmm. other and say, you know what? Well, this is what the Bible says. So don't worry what they're saying. Those are all lies from the enemy. This is what the word of God says. So what does that look like for you guys with um, just your relationship with God, how does that even play a role, um, I guess, in schools? Like, or I know schools now have taken out, like, before they used to, like, read the Bible in the mornings and mm-hmm. pray. Yep. Well, what, is, what does school look like? For those who don't know what public high school looks like nowadays, you said a few things of what you see a lot. Um, have you seen drugs? Have you, oh, yeah. what does that look Absolutely. like in a public high school today? He's definitely had more experience than I have because mm-hmm. I was homeschooled all throughout middle mm-hmm. school. Um, but for high school anyways, uh, I think kids are really disrespectful mm-hmm. to any type of authority. Yep. And honestly, mm-hmm. like it gets on my nerves and it gets on a lot of people's nerves, a lot of other students' nerves because um, they just don't respect their teacher. 
They don't respect any of the administration. Um, they'll say bad things about our principal and stuff. And it's it's really sad because in and um, how schools used to be is like if you did anything to disrespect them, that was it. Like you are in trouble. Mm-hmm. And they don't really lay down the law like that anymore because it's scary because of how bold kids are now. Not in a good way, though. They're Mm-mm. bold in a, um, in just a very disrespectful way. Yeah. And so that's definitely what I see as a huge, huge problem in high school. Even with us, with our club, no respect is given for having our opinions. We respect them for mm-hmm. their own opinion. Yeah. I, I don't care. What, I mean... I would like for you to know the truth in the word of God Mm -hmm. um, and to love our country and everything because God gifted that to us. But I'm not going to be disrespectful to you because you don't agree with me. Yep, exactly. So that's what I think is a big thing. It's good. And I I agree. Just to add on what she was saying, that like I think that's one of the most important things that we can do is Mm -hmm. just like show people Mm -hmm. that it is okay to disagree with that and you don't have to give in to the temptation or that Mm -hmm. one friend who's always like let's go do this let's Mm -hmm. go do that Mm -hmm. or you don't have to like if somebody's doing this to you like she said turn the other cheek because ultimately that shows god through that because it's Mm going to be like wait what what's like different about Mm -hmm. that person why why are they not treating me like i'm treating them Mm -hmm. and ultimately even if you don't think so later on in their life they're going to go back to all those events in there if mm-hmm. they do come to the lord god willing they do and they're going to be like that's why because through these little things that's how people come to know god and yeah. it's just after a certain age they're like i don't want to do this anymore mm-hmm. i don't want to live like this because yep. drugs and gangs and sex and mm-hmm. alcohol doesn't make you it fulfills you for the moment, mm-hmm. but the only thing that can fully yeah, fulfill amen. you is God. Amen. So yep. they're going to do all this stuff. And I think mm-hmm. that's what people really have to realize that our, our age is that stuff. Yeah, it may fulfill you throughout high school. Mm-hmm. But then when all of those people that you are doing that stuff with, yeah. they've left you and they've done all this and you don't mm-hmm. have those lifelong friends and you don't have all this stuff. Are you just going to stick with that stuff? Yeah. And are you going to accidentally do something to yourself because of mm-hmm. that stuff? Or are you going to finally learn what's right and learn what you need to do and learn that you can be fulfilled with other things? You don't need that stuff in your life. And, yeah. and yeah. It's good. like the things of this world will fade away, but mm-hmm. the word of God will endure forever. Amen. And so, um, like he was saying, things can think you can think you're fulfilling yourself mm-hmm. in a moment. And yeah. obviously so many kids, so many adults think that and they yeah. They come across as happy, but, um, I mean, we know as believers that it's not fulfilling. And even when, as believers, we fall into our own sin and our own traps because we sin too. We can do just the same as non-believers and fall into those traps because of temptation. Um, But we can come out of that and realize the truth, Mm -hmm. which is why it's so amazing um, having the Lord, because we're all going to mess up. Mm-hmm. We're all human yep. <laughs> and we're not different in that way, but mm-hmm. we are different because we always have the Lord to fall back on and remember he's always with me. Yep. And if we feel lonely at school or at home or wherever, like he's always by our side. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, like you said, the big thing with authority, all, it talks about that in the Bible, like in the last days, people will be disrespectful to authority and not submit and i think it will where it does start is in the home right i Mm -hmm. mean a lot of these kids are probably hurting right hurting Mm -hmm. people hurt others we always hear that but it's so true because they probably don't have a mom and a dad who are really Mm -hmm. pouring into them loving them they have their own things that they're probably struggling with and they see it and so they go to school thinking okay well i'm gonna experience and enjoy this stuff but they don't have parents who are disciplining them right the bible talks about that is like children they need discipline and it says to spare the rod spoil Spoil the the child child. (laughs) and it's not an easy verse to hear but it's like they need discipline and i realized that in the moment the bible talks about that discipline does not feel good right no one likes it but in the end it produces a harvest of righteousness Mm -hmm. right and when you're in right standing with god you can be bold you are there's so many blessings for those mm-hmm. who live a life of righteousness. And I think that 
like I love what Turning Point stands for is like we need fathers. We need fathers to stand up yep. and say, mm-hmm. hey, even though I didn't have the perfect life in the past, just to be humble and honest, like, hey, sure. son, daughter, this is I messed up. but I don't want you to do this. Yeah. I hear so many fathers who say, well, who am I to tell them like I wasn't perfect? I'm like, even more so because you're not like let them know hey, I wasn't, but I want better for you. Like, exactly. I don't want you to have to go through what I went through. Exactly. And so, yeah, it really starts in the home. And I just want you guys to share, like, I mean, you're probably at the age where you probably get in trouble a lot. Like, even though you, like, when I see you guys, I'm like, you guys are perfect kids. But, no. I mean, <laughs> you have to get disciplined in order to be how you are. Like, the Bible talks about it also. It's like, train up a child in the way he should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. And... I just want to hear like what just encouragement to parents out there who are like, mm, it's just too hard. I want my friend. I want my friend. I want my child to be my friend. And you see that with parents. It's not, hey, I'm the parent. Like you have to respect me because the Bible says that honor your father and mother so life might go well with you. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it's like, I just don't want them to be mad at me. Like I want to be their best friend. But it's like, I hated my parents growing up i literally hated that they didn't let me do the things that the world was doing but i look back at it now i'm like thank you for sparing me from all the regret i could have had and like Mm -hmm. the pain that i would have gone through but can you guys share and just an encouragement to parents like it's okay you guys can discipline us doesn't feel good but we need it anything like that christian you get in trouble uh i mean (laughs) not as much as i used to but i definitely got in trouble a lot and i got in trouble the most at home but then second at basketball Mm. and with both of them like at home the biggest life lessons i learned was because i got in trouble and my parents Mm -hmm. disciplined me and my parents always said like you you'll get spankings but the only reason you're gonna get spankings is if you lie to me or you directly Mm. disobey yeah and i think that's like really shaped me into the person that i am and you don't always have to spank your child or whatever you can talk to them but sometimes like a punishment Mm -hmm. it has to be dealt and if you don't let that go through then you are putting that on your child like that's your fault Mm -hmm. and you are passing that down to your Mm -hmm. kid and uh, like that's why i never gonna lie again that's Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) after learning from when Mm -hmm. i was a kid that's just not something now and even with basketball you Mm. do this you're lazy with that then you get disciplined and it's not the same as at home Mm -hmm. it's just like you have a thousand suicides right but even if that kid is disobeying and stuff then they do that 90 percent of the time like it's just an example because they stop and they try to get their act together because they want more minutes or whatever right Mm -hmm. and it's just it shows that like the more discipline you have the more successful ultimately mm-hmm. you're gonna be Amen. And, mm-hmm. yeah. It's good. It's good. yeah um like i mean i'm currently in trouble right now but <laughs> <laughs> so, to be really honest this is real um yeah but i think like you know i am i get mad at my parents when i get in trouble or yep. i get mad when i can't go out as late as I want Mm -hmm. to because I tend to have older friends because I just fit in with older people Mm -hmm. and so that can be really hard when you have a friend who's 17 or 18 and you're 15 and you're like well I have to be home at nine (laughs) and they're like what the heck you know Mm -hmm. um so that's something that can be really hard but honestly it's it is so I have learned so many lessons from being Mm -hmm. disciplined and so I think the big thing is listening to your kid Mm. and not being like I'm the parent and blah 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 and I've talked to my parents about that too and they agree so I mean I'm not just like saying that to say it but it's really good to hear from your kid especially because if you want to talk to them like an adult and you want Mm -hmm. them to be a good and responsible adult then it's good to listen to them and then if you still have the same punishment or whatever then do it but as long as you hear them out, that's mm-hmm. going to make your kid be more inclined to be like, okay, I'm disciplined and I understand why. And they yeah. listened to mm-hmm. me and now I have more respect for why I'm being disciplined. Exactly. And so I think it really comes down to respect again, too. Mm-hmm. Um, kids don't really respect their parents that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's important. You can be mad at them, but mm-hmm. 
just being respectful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. same thing with parents because they need to understand that they're gonna have to stand before God, right. and give an account how they treated their kids. Because if they were um, harsh with them in a way that exasperating, all right, don't yeah, don't exasperate your children. Yeah. If you're doing things where it's like you're responding out of anger, because exactly. there's things where children are, it's not discipline; it's just exactly. straight up abuse and beatings. Yeah. And that's not how it's Mm -mm. supposed to be. Like, even whenever I got spankings growing up, my parents made it clear, this is why. And I'm not going to, they were, if anything, it was so true. They're like, it hurts me more than it hurts you. We had this one thing where they'd spank us and actually would hit them back in the (laughs) hand. And so my dad's hand sometimes would hurt. And he's like, it seriously hurts me. Because also just seeing like, you're my child, you're my baby. I don't like this. But I, there's this thing that, Someone said, I don't know if it was Prager, but he was saying, you need to discipline your kids so that an officer one day isn't beating them with a nightstick, right? You shouldn't True. beat your kids or do anything out of anger, yeah, no. but you should, like you said, Rylan, you need to communicate with them. Like, yeah. this is why we're doing exactly. it this way, because this is what the Bible says, and what you're doing is a sin, right? Lying, mm-hmm. stealing, cheating, um, disrespecting, mm-hmm. not listening to your parents, and... I think if you explain it that way, even though at the moment the kid might not hear it, yeah. at the end of the day, the Lord will speak to them and they'll exactly. be like, okay. And, and you usually think true. about it too anyways. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. yeah, I lost my train of thought, but I just think it's important for parents to um, do like mm-hmm. discipline when it's necessary, when yeah. um, they can use the word of God mm-hmm. to, to exactly. back up what they're doing. So as long as, like you said, they're communicating and explaining why, because then the kid's going to be more inclined to listen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And like, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Like, Mm -hmm. even if that parent, because it's not right to just hit your kid out of anger or whatever. Mm -hmm. So even if that kid did something so bad and Mm -hmm. you need to take a minute to Mm -hmm. go collect Mm -hmm. yourself and then come in and be able to explain it to them. And not just right when they do it, hit them out of anger because Mm -hmm. that's not right. That's not what the Bible means by spare the rod, spoil the child. Mm -hmm. It means that you can go collect yourself, Mm -hmm. but they need discipline, Mm -hmm. but healthy discipline. And that's not healthy discipline. Amen. That's good. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we're kind of a little bit over time, but um, I also wanted to bring up the things that you've done. You wrote um, something for was it the vaccine exemption that you wrote are you just a writer like do you is that something you enjoy (laughs) doing or how did that come about um I really have always liked grammar in school I enjoy writing and like my teachers have told me that I'm really good at creative writing Mm -hmm. I don't really know that I am but I really do enjoy writing um and so I don't know did you want me to read the thing yeah that'd be awesome if you yeah she wrote like a vaccine exemption like a letter and then um i just wanted to share also something i was listening to freedom seeds with isabel brown and she was talking about how with um mask having children doing it just how contaminated and disgusting the masks are Mm -hmm. and they just did some like researches and they saw that there was food poisoning sepsis pneumonia tuberculosis like all these things were in these masks so it's like there's also science behind why we don't do it it's not just because i don't want to do it because i don't like submitting to authority it's like no just write they how they say my body my choice for something where it technically isn't yours there's a body inside of you right for when people want to have an abortion but it's like okay but if we were being real with that statement what that statement really means it's like you have we the right each to have, decide yeah, we have a right and we have body. freedom of speech, right? Freedom yep. mm-hmm. to say these things and to stand up. But can you share that and also like what you used it with or? Yeah, absolutely. So we posted this, I posted this on my Instagram and reposted it on our Turning Point USA mm-hmm. Sabina Instagram. So I, it says the vaccine from a Christian perspective. To say that my choice to not inject my body with a newer medical technology shot that has no that has no long-term research behind it and does not prevent transmission of a virus that has a 98.8% survival rate but only lessens my own symptoms upon infection is unloving and selfish is ignorant 
to which I would say stop letting the media tell you what to think. It's important to do your own research and let the Holy Spirit lead your decision making. If you feel like taking the shot is the right thing to do for you, then take it. If you don't feel led to doing so after doing research, then don't. It is only our job to love, so we are not passing judgment upon those who choose not to take it. It is also not our job to compel others to take it. That's the individual's choice with the Lord. Taking the vaccine has nothing to do with loving others. We should not be using the word of God to defend why you should or why you shouldn't get a vaccine. Mm -hmm. It is a personal health choice. Our bodies are temples. Mm -hmm. The Lord has blessed us with them. So in making a decision for our bodies, we are making a decision for the body God gifted us with. That is a personal choice. Nowhere in the Bible it will tell you to put a vaccine in your body or to not put one in your body. Therefore, we need to stop using the word of God to try to say it's how to love people. And remember this, faith over fear. And then I said, the Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? And that's Psalm 27, 1. It's good. So. I love that. It's so good because a lot of times nowadays, I love how you said faith over fear. It's People are just responding out of fear. Like, mm-hmm. right, we are supposed to, as Christians, respond out of the fear of the Lord. Right, Proverbs 28 or 20. 925 the fear of the lord will prove the fear of man will prove to be a snare or a trap and i've noticed that just growing up just whenever i fear people what they think you just there's so much bondage and you're just constantly Mm -hmm. there's always going to be someone to fear but when you trust the lord and know he's going to take care of me he's sovereign he's a big god he loves us all we'll be safe Mm -hmm. but there's so much anxiety and people who are just afraid because what is it really they're afraid of death they're afraid of death because Mm -hmm. when we die we're gonna have to everyone's gonna have to stand before god and be judged so i think they kind of know in the back of their mind they do know that oh my goodness i'm what some people are trying to say like oh i'll I'll just float around like they don't believe the bible says to be absent from this body means to be present with the lord like there's no weird reincarnation i'll be back like yeah. That's it. There's death and then judgment. But for you guys, what does that look like with everything with the the vaccine or things? So they're trying to get now young children to take it, and mm-hmm. young children has not. There was actually wise to do that, but there was just a story where this family went to go get their flu shots, mm-hmm. and these two little kids, I think they were two and five, mm-hmm. they accidentally gave them the COVID shot, oh, which goodness. isn't supposed to happen because it's too young but wow anyways you want to start i mean i obviously think it should be your choice whether you wear a mask Mm -hmm. or whether you get vaccinated or not because one your your body's your temple Mm -hmm. and you should have the right because it's america Mm -hmm. to be able to choose to get a vaccine i shouldn't be able to I shouldn't even have to think about, oh, if I don't get this vaccination, I'm going to I may lose my job. Mm -hmm. Or if I don't get this vaccination in five years, I may not even be able to go into the grocery Mm -hmm. store. I shouldn't have to think about that in our free country, you know. So and also with the masks, I've talked to a few doctors about it and they're Mm -hmm. like, well, just wear a mask because it can't hurt anything. Mm -hmm. But that is Mm -hmm. absolutely incorrect. And as a doctor, they should know that, too, because. One, bacteria is way bigger than a virus. Some masks do stop bacteria. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Your body needs bacteria. Mm -hmm. It's not a good thing to filter out bacteria. Your body has an immune system and it does that itself. It filters out the good from the bad bacteria. And a virus, a mask is not going to stop a virus. Mm -hmm. It may stop your spit, but guess what? If the virus is in your spit, it's going through the mask. Exactly. So... The mask is absolutely pointless. Mm-hmm. Um, and the vaccination, if it if I'm completely healthy, why do I need to put something in my body that may harm me yeah. for the safety of maybe an older person, right? When mm-hmm. if the vaccine prevents you from dying or prevents you from going to the hospital, they should just mm-hmm. take the vaccine. If they're really concerned with that, then that is their thing, yep. not mine. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, they shouldn't be concerned with that because ultimately, mm-hmm. if you're going to die, you're going to die. Exactly. If 
the it's, Lord wants you right plan, now, yes. then you are going to go mm -hmm. whether you have that vaccine or not. The vaccine yeah. is not going to stop you mm -mm. from dying. If you're going to die, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Amen. And at the end of the day, like the vaccine is, it doesn't prevent transmission. Yep. You're taking it for you and you alone. Yep. It's exactly. not going to affect anybody else around you. You can go and tell people, I got the vaccine and they'll be like, thank you so much for protecting me. <laughs> but you, they're, you're not protecting no. them. You're protecting yourself from getting really bad symptoms mm -hmm. or from possibly dying. Or, I mean, there's been so many terrible side effects and yeah. people dying from the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think, like, it's no one's business if you get the vaccine or not. Exactly. That's not the debate. It's just, let me have That's my freedom. choice. Exactly. Because this is America. And I think it's disrespectful that people think they can just tell you to put something into your body because I said so, because we're mm -hmm. big government and you mm -hmm. do what we say. When there's men and women dying for us and have died for us to have this wonderful country. Yep. And exactly. I think that's so disrespectful yeah. of anyone to just neglect what they've done for mm -hmm. us and Amen. what Jesus has done for us, exactly. which has blessed us with this country. Exactly. Amen. So. Amen. And it's gambling your health, mm -hmm. you know, like how are you going to force, like no other vaccination is forced. Mm -hmm. There you obviously for like schools and stuff if your parents didn't sign the chart then you have to get your vaccinations but there is always an exempt yeah. for any vaccination that there is mm -hmm. it could be a religious exempt mm -hmm. and your parents just have to sign that paper so yeah. there's no vaccine as of right now that you have to get and the covid vaccine should not be anything more mm -hmm. than that and yeah. 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 it's I don't know. It's crazy that you can't you can't even go and fight for your country if you don't mm -hmm. have this thing that gambles your health. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It's not it's not like if if you get this vaccine, nothing's going to happen from the vaccine. You're just you're just not going to die from COVID. No, there's things that happen to your body after this is injected to you. Even if it's not a live virus, there's still stuff that can mm -hmm. happen to your yeah. body. And I believe it's like seven thousand people have died from getting the vaccine mm -hmm. um, and just just. I think it was two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there was this girl who had a doctor's note to not get the vaccine and uh, her boss said that she either has to get it mm. or she'll get fired. Wow. And they didn't care about the doctor's note and because she had an autoimmune disorder mm. and she went and she got it and her whole left side of her face went paralyzed and then her left side of her body did. Wow. So she's in a huge lawsuit with her work right now. Mm. Um, so that just goes to show like there's stuff that can happen to you yeah. mm -hmm. and exactly. it's gambling your health mm -hmm. and ultimately gambling. Like so there's so many variables to mm -hmm. just, it's, I don't know. It's yeah, just it's wrong pretty, to say every yeah. single person, you don't no. know my health conditions. Exactly. You don't know this. Yeah. And if your health conditions are so bad that COVID is going to kill you, mm -hmm. that is not mm -hmm. uh, the getting the vaccine is not going to help you. Yeah. Yeah. If I get it, if yeah. I get it, I'm, Still, I still can get the COVID, the COVID, <laughs> the I, I, <laughs> I still can get COVID the same exact as if I didn't have it. It mm -hmm. just maybe could prevent me mm -hmm. from dying. It's mm -hmm. not yeah. going to stop me from getting it. So therefore, it's not going to stop me from giving it to you yeah. if I get the vaccine. Yeah. So yeah. I it's think it's a personal control decision. control is what it is. Exactly. They want to control yep. their, the government wants to be God exactly. instead of how it should be one nation under God mm -hmm. and nowadays that's We've why that you guys completely. are doing what you're doing right you mm -hmm. are being persecuted at the school you're at right having a lot of people hate you and like you were saying rylan we as like believers should be praying for you kids and going to the school board meetings and standing up it shouldn't just be you guys yep. doing it and i'm so thankful you are because that is so powerful and god will reward you for that if you don't see any rewards here on earth like He'll reward you in heaven for mm -hmm. standing up Your for the truth. Your reward is heaven. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> That's all you need. And and it just is really cool because we have been seeing that. We've been seeing parents realizing, oh, my goodness, I was thinking this is fine and it's not a big deal. But now this is what this is the country my kids are going to have to grow up in. Mm -hmm. And for us, we can't just sit back and be like, Jesus, take the wheel. It's okay. Like yeah. We need to stand in yeah. the gap and realize that we have the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. inside of us who exactly. will help us. And even if, right, you could be at school and someone could be like, do you believe in God? Like it happened to Cassie Barnett or yeah, she was she was shot and killed. Yeah, exactly. And in my mind, I think, oh, yeah, I'd be so bold to do that. No, apart from Christ, if I don't wake up every day and say, God, my life is not my own. 
I like you said, Christian, heaven is our reward. And so God, if you need to take me home today, then I trust you. I'm not excited for living for these things of this world. Like this is great. Everything we get to do, but we're going to party it up in heaven. Like that's where we truly can travel and do all these things. And that's what's amazing as Christians is like, we have a hope and these other people are depressed and sad and lonely. And the suicide rates that have Mm -hmm. gone up with kids your age because of the lockdowns and shutdowns Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So So it's crazy with like all this stuff with people not going to church and then how the alcohol and pornography, all that has gone up. So for us as Christians, like we can't just be lazy. We can't Mm -hmm. be like the Bible talks about cowards. We have to stand up. So I'm thankful for you guys, even though you could be like, well, it's just going to be how it's going to be. Like we're just trust the Lord, but there's action. Like faith exactly. requires action. We need to exactly. obey. You have so to show your faith. You can't just yep, exactly. you can't just be in your own box and be like, "Well, I know what I believe, so I yep. don't need to do anything about yep. it." And I've been discouraged by fellow believers for mm. what I'm doing, and wow. that's really discouraging because it's like I'm standing up for things that align with the Word of God, yeah. and I'm doing that at my school where people hate mm. me. Yep, and. Four believers are doing that, plus Mm -hmm. more people in our Turning Point group, which they're all amazing. And, you know, like the word of God is what we need to be standing up for. We need to be disciples. We need to be bold. And Mm -hmm. he calls us to be bold. And um, as long as you're doing it in love. And I think so many things can get confused with like, well, Christians shouldn't be involved in politics Hmm. because that's just not, it's just not the right thing. I'm like, okay, well, if Christians aren't involved in politics, if we're not involved in all that kind of stuff, then how is God going to overrule Mm -hmm. into our schools Mm -hmm. where kids are being made into adults? Yep. And, and we see already Mm -hmm. God is taken out of schools. Yep. And it's hard enough to get a Bible club on campus. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough to get a turning point club on campus. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be believers. doesn't matter your age. Um, Like you were talking about the first Timothy verse, like Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what age you are. We need to be involved in wherever we are and standing up for truth. And like you said, like people might not see that, whether they're believers or not, but God will reward us in heaven. And as long as we're following what he's telling us, I think that's what's important. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Yep. And you guys are in good hands because the Bible says, remember if they hate you, remember they hated me first. They hated Jesus yeah. first. Amen. So yeah. praise God that your whole school hates you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And and I feel like exactly what with she was saying, like people are always like, if they're a kid, they're like, well, I'm young. God can't use me mm. in these ways. And yep. that is absolutely not true. Amen. And I feel like people who think that, like maybe go read your Bible more, just even just mm-hmm. pray more because... God can use you in ways you would never even imagine Mm -hmm. and you could do something so incredible and serve God and Mm -hmm. people just don't realize and they're like I'm only I'm only 13 I can't go do anything so was Mary yep yeah exactly (laughs) yeah so it's like David he was young yeah Yeah. yep just read the Bible and it started with a young age these people like it wasn't any power of them that they could boast it was only in Christ and I see Mm -hmm. that in you guys it's like Nothing that can be like, well, Christian, you're amazing. And Rylan, you're amazing. It's like Christ through you is amazing. God is just shining through you. And that's all that you guys can continue to do is just let Christ's light shine through you. And and, yeah, and don't give up. Keep keep it up. But do you have any last piece of advice for the listeners? Any little little nuggets of advice for anyone? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think just no matter what age you are, like we were saying, like yep. go out and do what the Lord has called you to do. Um, and if we can do it, mm-hmm. you can definitely do it. <laughs> and you're going to learn as you go and it's going to be hard and um, it's going to it'll make you feel a little hurt sometimes. But because you have the Lord, that's going to overcome all those feelings. Amen. So, Amen. yeah. Exactly. And you guys should definitely follow our Turning Point yes. Instagram so we'll put that in the description below. They can check that out. Yeah, Christian. just exactly what she was saying. Just follow your passions. You know, you could be being you could think you're being called this way, but you're being called in a way that you never knew. Mm-hmm. So just follow what you believe is right, not what you want to do, not what you think. But just like I never thought I'd be doing this. <laughs> she came to me one <laughs> me day. Me neither. Mackenzie, this girl named Mackenzie <laughs> is calling me and I think I might start a club. 
I never knew that yeah. I was going to do yeah. this, but this Pretty has much. turned to be one of the best things that I have mm -hmm. done. So it's just like, yeah. if if there's something in your life that you think God is calling you to, don't sit back and be like, no, I don't think so. Like, yeah. go and don't mm -hmm. just like yeah. start walking there, like sprint there mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the people who walk, you're you're not going to get as far as the people who are just sprinting through and just serving and serving and serving. Mm -hmm. You just, yeah. just make sure that you're constantly like praying or in your Bible for the Lord to lead you to things that he wants you to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you're so fulfilled. Like when you guys are serving and I see you guys at like Calvary and doing all that you serve, it's satisfying. Yeah. Like you yeah. get encouraged that you're storing up treasures in heaven where it's going to last for eternity. And it's also Amen. fun. You can be with it fellow believers. Yeah. And, but I'm excited to get to know you guys more and do more events with you because yes. we have our Turning Point Faith. Yeah. You guys can watch the video before we explain it. But And if anyone else, I know some kids in Marana want to start a chapter because oh, I think cool. you guys are the only high school chapter, I think, right? In, There's one at Cienega. Okay. And yeah. I think that's it. There you go. Yeah. But, I think that if everyone, anyone wants to contact you, they can go to Instagram yep. and message you Just and then Absolutely. Get, get involved with that. But yep. we have an event on November 15th at the UVA where Charlie Kirk is going to come and speak. Yes. And so you guys are going to be there. Yep. yep. So we'll you guys can meet them in person. Yeah. And come meet us. we'll be there and we'll hopefully plan events and stuff together. Absolutely. And we can combine it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll be awesome. It would be awesome. But thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. God is good. God is good. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations and also at Turning Point Faith Calvary. Thanks so much to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. Please make sure to check out their website in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.